Hi everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we will be covering some of the differences between application load balancer and a network load balancer. So we'll see some major differences. We'll see some costing and we'll see in what scenario you should go for which type of load balancer. So let's start this video. So the first and the major difference between NLB and ALB is that NLB works on layer four of the OSI model whereas ALB works on layer 7. NLB supports protocols such as TCP, UDP, etc. ALB supports protocols such as HTTP, HTTPS traffic. When you create NLB, it takes some static IPs or you can assign some elastic IPs as well. But ALB is flexible in this case. ALB is context aware and it can direct your request based on any single variable like it can pass your request to target group based on path or any IPs or etc. But NLB does not have any such fam familiarity. NLB forward each target on different ports whereas ALB can forward request based on host based or path based as well. Since NLB does not have to do much of processing or context based uh, routing so it is very fast. It has it offers very low latency but ALB has low latency but it is still slower as compared to NLB. So NLB is the faster one. In NLB you can have targets such as EC2 instance IPs or you can have another ALBs as well the target. But ALB you can have EC2 IP instances or Lambda function as the target. NLB has when you send traffic to NLB the traffic is controlled by target security group. Suppose you have some EC2 instances, there the target, there will be some security group attached so the traffic can be controlled there. But ALB has a security group attached to it so you can do some filtering at ALB level as well. So the use case for NLB is that when you need some non-HTTP protocol or you need some static IP or you need a high performance so you can go for NLB. But for ALB, when you need content-based content routing, then you can go for ALB. And if I talk about costing, so NLB is costlier as compared to a ALB. So you have to choose wisely when you are selecting the load balancer because cost is one important factor. So I repeat, NLB is costlier as compared to ALB. So this is a quick design that shows some difference between ALB and NLB and I have picked this design from the AWS console itself so you can refer that as well so in case of ALB if you see it offers HTTP and HTTPS protocol and the target group can be Lambda or other EC2 instances or IPs but in case of NLB you have TCP, UDP, TLS traffic flowing in and you can have other ALBs or EC2 instances or IPs as a target as well but the major difference that you need to consider that it works on TCP, UDP, this protocol, but ALB works on HTTP or HTTPS protocol. So let's go to the AWS console and I'll show that some of the differences between these load balancer. I'll have these load balancer created. So this is my AWS console and currently I'm in the EC2 dashboard. And if you scroll down to the load balancing, here you can see a load balancer option is available and currently I have two load balancer created. One is network type and other is application load balancer. So I'll cover the differences from console as well. So if I just go to application load balancer first, here you can see important thing that listeners and rules are here. So currently I have created only one listener that is listening on port 80 and protocol is HTTP. So here there are rules, so there is one only default rule available. So you can add a rule. You can define this rule as my content routing, let's say. You can click next. So here you can add some conditions. Like you can define on what parameters you want this to routing happen. So you can define ho host header, path, request method, these the query string as well. So you can choose any of this condition and based on the condition, let's say I selected path and uh, this only for demo. So this is a condition I have defined and he here if I do next, then I can select an action as well. 
so based on this condition then what action i want to take okay, so i can route this request to other target groups as well but if i talk about nlb this feature is not there you cannot do content or you can do you cannot such conditions in case of nlb coming back to the load balancer If I go to security you can see our load balancer has a security group attached to it so you can do traffic filtering at the an ALB level as well so you can add or allow allow traffic whichever you want so you can control traffic from here as well network mapping so you can see it is created in two subnet now coming to my network load balancer here you can see I have created a listener and it is listening on port 80 but the protocol is TCP if I just open it because network load balancer can take a application load balancer as a target as well so I have added my application load balancer as a target to this so if I just open the network load balancer target group you can see my target is application load balancer so this is one major difference listener so if I go to network mapping here you can see it is created in two subnets so here you can assign some elastic IP or static IP to the load balancer as well so this is another major difference as compared to ALB so that's all for this video thank you